I have made eight mistakes in rise of kingdoms over the past five and a half years of me playing this game that have costed me literally thousands of legendary commander sculptures and hundreds of thousands of gems completely wasted. So in today's video, I'm going to go over all these mistakes so you don't have to, but first what's going on guys, cheers. Avoiding these mistakes could literally save you thousands of dollars. So if you appreciate this type of rise of kingdoms content, all I ask is a quick thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing. If you want more rise of kingdoms content that brings you value like this. Now this video is not sponsored whatsoever. So instead I'm going to remind you guys, I have a second channel where I cover some really cool topics that aren't related to mobile games. And in the description, you'll also find links to my discord and my Twitch channel. Hopefully I'll see you on those platforms as well. Okay. Without further ado, let's jump into the first massive regret that I have in rise of kingdoms. And this one is a little bit, this one's actually embarrassing. And it's the most recent mistake that I've made in the game. And I made it extremely publicly. It's honestly probably going to shock you guys, but my first massive mistake that I want to talk about today is Gorgo. I know it's so embarrassing, bro. Oh my God. So here's the thing. I have a five, five, one, five Gorgo. Okay. And she performs extremely well in the open field. I invested in her exclusively for open field fighting in the past. I had used Tarek in the open field and I found that Gorgo would just be a better pairing, especially for Liu Che. And I used, I think 18 skill resets or something along those lines to get her to this skill configuration. And to be completely honest with you guys, this was a massive mistake. I should have not invested in Gorgo at all. I actually got extremely mad when I was using all my skill resets on her. If you missed that video, I'll try to put it in the, at the top of the video here or in the description below. I was screaming in that video, like actually genuinely losing my mind. And it was all for nothing. I didn't need to invest in Gorgo. I, I should not have invested in Gorgo. And why is that? Are you, am I saying that Gorgo is bad in the open field? No, actually she's extremely good in the open field. I performed well with her in the open field as well. And I've had people reach out to me saying, Omniarch, thanks for the suggestion. Gorgo Liu Che is clapping. And also even one of my alliance leaders RK has been using Gorgo with Liu Che in the open field and getting insane trades in our recent KBK. So Gorgo with Liu Che in the open field is a tried and true, extremely powerful open field March. So why do I regret investing in her? Not only the sculptures, 380 of them, by the way, but also the skill resets. They're so hard to come by. I used all of them on her. The reason that I regret this investment is because I didn't see any better performance out of Gorgo with Liu Che than I did with Liu Che Alex. I found that Liu Che Alex was performing just as good, if not better than my Liu Che with Gorgo. And it's just a faster March. Like it literally has so much March speed. It's insane. And the way that you play with this pairing is so much safer with Liu Che Alex. You just go in and out of fights and the instant proc damage here deals so much. And even if you do stay in the fight, then you start to get all the benefits of the massive AOE damage from Liu Che's active skill. And so this pairing just, again, it performed as good or better than the Gorgo Liu Che with the benefit of it just being significantly faster in the open field. So I can get to objectives faster. I can get away from unfavorable conditions faster. And Alexander the Great is a commander that I have invested in and expertise literally years ago, literally before they even started tracking that type of thing. I expertise Alexander the Great. He's been sitting on the bench forever and I finally have a great use for him. And I was considering benching him again for Gorgo. And it just turns out to be the case that like I found Alex to be as good, but faster. So like I literally didn't, oh my God, I used Gorgo like maybe half a dozen times my last KVK. And I was just like, man, this is just not, it just felt easier and better to use Alexander the Great. That's just the truth. So my investment here for me is a mistake and a regret, even though she, I don't take back anything I've said about her. She's extremely good in the field. And especially, obviously, if you're a garrison player, like you might as well use her in the field too. She's insane. But for me personally, I feel like this was a big mistake. Moving on to my second massive regret in my rise of kingdoms journey. And that is another infantry commander. This is probably one of the more recent mistakes that I've also made. Okay. And it also comes in the form of Sargon the Great. I have expertise Sargon the Great. Now I expertise him pretty much immediately. Like as soon as I possibly could, I think I did two or three wheels of him. I think I even posted some of those wheel spins on my channel. You can see that I got 189 sculptures of him from the wheels. And then I just spent 500 sculptures 
to expertise him and why did i do this well he's an infantry commander with the skill tree great talent trees he's built for open field fighting and spreading the odd debuff at the time seemed like a really good strategy especially because he has a nice distribution of stats he has 20 percent health 10% attack and he has 10% defense plus he has March speed as well so in theory like everything on his kit looks really good he has instant proc damage when you reach 10 stacks of odd but the problem with Sargon is that his maximum value comes from sticking to a target for five seconds after your active skill is cast and that's just it's too slow getting the most value out of this active skill is just too slow players are not playing like this in the open field the best thing that you can do with sargon is swarm a flag swarm a fortress swarm a rally maybe you can swarm things with sargon and he's going to perform super well there because you do output an insane amount of single target damage over time and again the rest of his kit is really good but for actual just just open field fighting if that's all you're planning to do sargon from my experience is just not cutting it he's just way too slow and honestly i don't use him i barely ever use sargon he's just permanently on the bench i was hoping that of course with liu che coming out that sargon and liu che would perform well and it does but also like you spread odd debuff stacks with skill damage and you're not dealing skill damage with Lee Che. So it was, it was like so close to being the perfect pairing, but unless they make some way for this damage factor to be like, I don't know, doubled or something where like two ticks of the damage is 2000 damage factor. That would be great. But besides that, like, I just can't imagine a world that I will ever use Sargon again, unless of course there is a scenario where i'm swarming a flag but i'm not a whale like that okay i'm not that guy so for me sargon was a massive regret now if you guys are watching this video and you have invested in sargon i want you to put an f in the comment section below put an rip in the comment section below pour one out for all the sargon sculptures wasted okay i fell for it you fell for it. we all fell for it. well maybe not all of us some of you maybe you saved your sculptures and and that was probably the right play it's also worth noting though that in my defense okay i was running running three infantry armies in the open field when I invested in Sargon and so for me at that time you have to remember when Sargon came out okay we didn't have Gorgo or Liu Che we had Tark which was great I got him as well I ended up using Tark more than I used Sargon just because of the active skill was so bad on Sargon but you have to remember that like we had Guan Scipio and that was like kind of it people were trying to make like Alex and Harold and trying to make them work at that time and it just I was desperate for something new and so I got Sargon and I was hoping he would be the savior and he turned out to be a massive regret for my account and that leads me into my third regret which is that I stayed an infantry main for too long okay I was running a 3-1-1 setup three infantry one cav one archer that was how I proceeded to develop my account this was a couple of years ago at this point or maybe it was like a year year and a half ago that I switched and I did that for too long that is not a good strategy especially for infantry but really not for anybody I don't think anybody should be running a 3-1-1 setup for any troop type right now it just does not make sense there are some insanely powerful commanders in every troop type that like if you're not using them you're just leaving value on the table there and so by building towards a 311 back in like 2021 2022 i was leaving a lot of value on the table now my one cavalry march back then was nevsky with william insanely good pairing and then joan of arc prime came out and i decided to use nevsky with joan which was just even better right we all know that but eventually i just had enough and i decided okay i'm gonna run two infantry pairs and I'm going to bench one infantry pair, my third one with the worst gear, which has kind of just become like my sunset Canyon gear like that. I'm just using this on my Trajan for sunset Canyon. That's literally all this ever gets used for these days, which is kind of sad because like having gear for Canyon is like kind of a stupid thing to do unless you're a whale. But anyway, I benched my third infantry March and I did a two infantry, two cavalry, one archer March. And that was to me a good pivot and i don't regret it at all i think if anyone is going to start building out their account in endgame it should be a 2-2-1 setup in my opinion or 2-1-1-1 with the last march being engineering and i really only recommend that to like super high spenders or people who are looking for like a variation in their play style who like the micromanagement and also for people 
who already have four extremely good sets, right? Like engineering, no question should be your last March that you invest in. And for most people, it's still not a good idea. Not that they don't get good reports. I mean, good reports for, especially with Cordoba behind Margaret, I've seen insanely good reports, but you have to understand what you're getting into when you're investing in engineering. And to me, it's an obvious end game last investment, right? But for most people, it should be a two, two, one setup. And historically the best two, two, one setup would probably be two calves, two archer, one infantry. But right now at this specific moment in time, it seems to be the case that two infantry, two cavalry and one archer or two infantry, two archer, one cavalry that those seem to be the best right now but historically you would only want to run one infantry march and it just took me too long to get to that point moving on to mistake number four i maxed out a meta garrison back in the day and i never really got to use it that much i have a fully expertise zenobia and i have a fully expertise isun sin and these just sit on my city wall and don't ever do anything now the reason that i invested in these commanders is because I was actually in a previous kingdom and at this point I literally don't remember what kingdom it was okay the kingdom that I was in before I came back to 1568 that was a kingdom where a lot of players migrated out and they kind of just needed more garrison players and I had a bunch of sculptures just sitting there and I was like okay well I can max out Zenobia YSS because I at that time remember I had three infantry pairs so I was kind of like I was an infantry main and I'm like well why not right like let's do it and so I maxed them out and I barely ever use them at all. Like I never, right? Like maybe one, like one or two, I think two KVKs ago, I might've like emergency jumped in a flag for like 30 minutes. Like there's, there's just no, I never really got the full value out of these commanders and they're both expertise, which means I spent 1,380 legendary commander sculptures maxing this pair. And I just didn't get to use them okay and the problem is that like when i maxed them out first of all i was vip 16 which means i didn't have the five percent all damage for 17 and then even by the time i got to vip 17 like i still don't max the crystal tech every kvk like i'm not a whale like that right and so if i'm not gonna have max crystal tech when it matters the most then there's always gonna be a long list of players in my kingdom that are better garrisons than me even if i have decent gear even if i have decent armaments and i have good commanders like it's just not gonna it's not gonna cut it right like I have a couple of good special talents here I've gotten some nice progress on like my iconics here like I have iconic five shields a turn which is nice I mean obviously that's mainly for open field fighting because you get the March speed there but Eternal Knight talented at level four is solid right I'm gonna get my hammer to iconic three when I have enough materials for it but overall without my max tech like I'm probably never going to be a garrison lead and so again over a thousand sculptures just down the drain so if you're watching this and you want to avoid this this mistake just know that you are if you're a free-to-play player you are probably never going to be a garrison choice or a top garrison choice for your kingdom no matter what kingdom you're in unless maybe you're in like a c or d seed kingdom okay you're probably never going to garrison or rally lead and so if that's the case save yourself the headache and just don't invest in garrison or rally commanders for anything other than open field fighting if you want to invest in you know again gorgo for open field fighting go for it that's fine i don't think you need to but you can you know there's other you know sometimes you have decent conquering commanders that work in the open field like if you look at for example well nebu himself is a great example because he's got aoe and march speed and he's lasted a, quite a while in the open field to be honest with you guys but you know you could look at somebody like ashurbanipal who is an even better example of that he's a conquering commander if you want to invest in him for the field you can just don't get it twisted you're probably not going to be a garrison or rally lead so don't waste those sculptures moving on to mistake number five this is a mistake that i literally made during my first year of playing the game so in my defense i made this mistake without knowing the game super well like i kind of understood how to play and all this other stuff but i didn't really get it to its full extent what do i mean by this well the mistake that i made during my first one year to 18 months i would say is that i focused all of my efforts on getting tier five units okay all of my excess gems that i got was spent on books of the covenant all of my speed ups and progress was put towards technology military technology and my first year on the game i was mainly free to play i think that i spent maybe like 50 or 100 dollars in my first year maybe probably closer to 50 i'm if i'm being honest with you guys and besides that i was i was a super casual almost free to play player and i spent everything i had to get tier 5 units and what that meant was i was not investing in things like vip and i was not investing in things like powerful early game commanders like ysg 
and like Alexander the Great. And what this meant was when I finally got tier five units, my VIP was lagging and I had no good commanders to put those units behind. Right. So I have good, I have the best units, but what am I going to do with them? Like I hadn't, I didn't even have a maxed Minamoto at that point. Right. And I was already in end game. I was in like season, you know, four or five of KVK. I don't even remember back then it was just KVK. And so then I had to play catch up with getting some good commanders on my account. And that's never what you want to be doing. Okay. You never want to do that. The truth is that you can actually perform decently well with tier four units in KBK, even in season of conquest. Now that only is true. If you have good commanders with decent armaments and decent gear. Okay. You're not going to use tier four units and perform well in KBK. If you're, if you have trash commanders, trash gear, trash armaments, but if you have good of everything and a little bit of crystal tech, you can actually perform pretty well with tier four units. I actually tested it out in my most recent KVK. There was a few evenings where I wasn't like, I couldn't fully dedicate to playing open field fighting. And so I just ran full tier four units for like three or four marches. And I was still trading positive, which was nice. And again, in my defense, the reason that I was doing this is because everyone told me that the fun begins at end game. And I was like, okay, well, what's end game? We'll get obviously maxing your city hall. That's part of end game. And okay. Also getting tier five units that's end game. And so that's what I did. I just tunnel vision towards that. And then I got tier five with nothing to do with them. So don't make that mistake. I think it is important to make progress on your VIP in the early game. It's important to, well, you should collect commander sculptures in the early game. If you can, unfortunately with the current meta in rise of kingdoms, there's not really that many good things to pick up on your way to end game. Alexander the great right now is a decent pickup, but even still, like, is he going to age super well after Liu Che has a better pairing? Probably not. Right. And we know infantry are probably going to be coming in July of 2024 at the end of July. And so with that coming down the pipeline, we might bench Alex again. And so really like same thing with YSG. There's just, there, there's not great investments on your way to end game these days anyway, but even still, you know, you shouldn't pump everything into just tier five units. You should be saving a lot of gems for the end game wheels of fortune. You should be saving those gems for ways to get your hands on better gear. You should be again, spending it on some VIP to get at least like VIP 10, 12, or even 14 gets you three sculptures per day. Those things are equally, if not more important than getting to tier five units in the end game. So don't make that mistake. Mistake number six comes in the form of partial investments in commanders. Okay. These are commanders that not only did I waste my sculptures on them, but I never even really used them after I spent sculptures on them, right? Like this is like, this is the textbook horrible investment choice. Okay. For example, let's take a look at my Genghis Khan five, five, three, one. Okay. Now I got to say, I got him to five, five, one, one through wheels of fortune. Okay. And that's a waste of gems, right? 190 legendary commander sculptures from wheels alone is a lot of gems. And that's a waste of gems because I don't use Genghis Khan at all. Now getting this third skill to three happened from the commander re-release chests and from like opening up keys, like sovereign keys, like all that sort of stuff, right? The legendary tavern, but I'd much rather have the gems for this, right? And again, I made this partial investment back in probably 2019, early 2020, maybe. Oh yeah. It was mid 2019 that I started spinning for him. And the reason for this is because that was the moment that I realized I got T5 without anything good to put in front of them. Right. And so like back then I was like, well, okay, maybe I can start investing in cavalry because I had, you know, Minamoto at like five, five, something, something. And, you know, I thought maybe cavalry would be a good choice. So I spun a little bit for Khan. And then I was like, well, you know, at that point, people kind of realized like, okay, Khan's actually not that good. And it was just a complete waste. So I moved on. And then I made the same mistake again later down the line with, and this was even way more recently with Chuck, right? Look, I have a five, 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 two Chuck. Now I got all of this from the wheel of fortune, 455 sculptures from the wheel of fortune. Now, part of that is because at this point, I don't have anything to spin on the infantry wheel. Like whenever the infantry wheel comes around, I've maxed everyone else, right? Like they're all maxed. So like, there's nothing else for me to even get there besides Chuck. But even still, like I've spent a lot of gems on that wheel, at least the first few times it came around, because again, like I mentioned earlier, I was desperately an infantry main. I wanted anything that could make infantry work, right? The reason that I got Chuck is the same reason that I got Sargon and they're both massive regrets for me because again, I was just grasping at whatever Lilith would give us, like whatever the new infantry was, I was getting it. Cause I was like, Oh, come on, please. Like, can I please make it useful? 
And it turns out time and time again, Guan Yu just kept outperforming, outperforming, outperforming. It didn't matter what the new commanders were. Everyone was still using Guan with Alex. They were still using Guan with CPO. They were still using Guan with whoever. And so I have a 5552 Chook and I've literally never used him on the open field. Look at how many kills I have literally zero i have not used him against a single player in the game okay so i have probably wasted over 450,000 gems on just chook and genghis khan alone and i've literally gotten zero not a single ounce of benefit out of these two commanders so please take it for me oh oh we got 44k look at that take it for me like don't just don't do it okay don't do it never partially invest in a commander if you're going to invest in a commander it should be the case that you go all in on that commander okay what that means is hoarding a bunch of sculptures okay hoard a bunch of them and then when you're ready to pull the trigger in a full pair of commanders you dump all the sculptures into them that's how you should be investing in commanders don't try to slowly build them up over time because by the time they get to a point where you're going to use them great news there's a better commander out there right and so then you just feel bad about that mistake number seven is what you're looking at on the screen here and this is my farm account and no it is not a mistake to have a farm account the mistake is that I don't really use my farm account you can even see right here that I have the King's return I've been trying to get back into using him ever since KVK ended but I just don't get on my farm account enough I'm just too lazy okay I know it sounds ridiculous it doesn't take that long to send out you know your gatherers I get that but part of me like when I log in part of me wants to finish my daily quests it's just something in my brain just it makes me want to do it and when I log in I feel like I have to do it and then over time I re I feel like okay every time I log into my farm it's a waste of 10 minutes or something like that and I just then I just don't do it and then the answer is well just stop worrying about your dailies and send out your gatherers and to that I say that's true but for some reason my brain just doesn't do it okay so my mistake here is that I'm just not as active on my farm account as I should be and truthfully I should have more than one farm account I should have two or three farm accounts if you're watching this and especially if you're a free-to-play player you definitely need two or three farm accounts no question in my mind you should be doing that don't make the same mistake as me just log in send out your gatherers and then go back to your main I've had this account for literally years okay there's no excuse for it to not be tier 5 or at least city hall 25 and even that I'm not I'm 23 okay so please make farms and use them and finally mistake number eight is one that I made again many years ago but it is still one of my top regrets in rise of kingdoms and I'm hoping that I can prevent you guys from making the same mistake especially if you're a new player and that is none other than dumping legendary commander sculptures into both Cao Cao and Charles Martel these are gold key commanders and Cao Cao was the first of the offenses for me I spent at least if not 200 probably more on investing in Cao Cao okay when it comes to legendary commander sculptures I put hundreds into him and the reason for that and you're not going to be able to I can't prove this because it was so long ago that it was before the 2020 cutoff date but the reason for this is because like I explained before I was free to play and so I wanted to get I wanted a good legendary okay I was tired of using like Pelagius and all the other you know epic trash and so I just wanted to get my hands on a, on a good legendary and I thought okay well even though it's true that you're going to expertise these for free over time it takes about five years okay maybe four years if you're lucky but probably about five years to expertise a legendary commander with just gold keys alone that has been the case for me and many others with like let's say my Frederick my El Cid my Julius Caesar and also my Mehmed you could see the recruitment date versus the expertise time same thing with El Cid actually insane I got him in 2018 if we take a look at Frederick we could see again this was actually my first ever legendary commander got him on I got him like two weeks after I started playing the game or a week later or something like that almost exactly five years to the day even that's insane looking at Caesar kind of the same thing and so I thought okay well as a free-to-play player if it's going to take me five years to max out Cao Cao well I might as well just spend universals to speed it up right because otherwise I'm probably never going to get there like it's better to at least enjoy the game than to just say oh well I'll get it for free in five years like that's insane right that's just a stupid way to play but the truth is that I shouldn't have dumped the sculptures into Cao Cao and Martel now Martel I think I, I didn't spend as many I think I spent maybe a hundred on him or something like that but even still between the two of these it was an insane amount of universal legendary commander sculptures that I completely wasted now if you're saying okay well I'm Eric, if it's gonna take four or five years to max them for free why are you saying it's a regret well it's because now look at me I could have maxed him twice at this rate right like I could same thing with Cao Cao if we take a look here look at this 926 
I have an insane amount. Like, what am I ever going to do with these sculptures? This is, these are two legendary commanders that I could have expertise twice over at this point because I completely waste the universals on doing so. And to make matters even worse, these commanders are not even usable in the end game anymore. Like you can't competitively use Cao Cao or Martel. Like there's some weird things that you can do with like the mobility tree on Cao Cao with like the altars of darkness and stuff like that. Like you can kind of contest it by running around. There's like little things that you can make use out of, right? But really this is a peacekeeping commander. He's good for rallying forts. That's it. And Charles Martel, I mean, people try to make him useful in 2024, but the truth is that it's just not really enough. In my opinion, I just don't think that once you hit season of conquest he's really moving the needle for anybody anymore. Like that's just the case, unfortunately. So with that being the case, not only is this a waste of hundreds of universal legendary commander sculptures, but I could have gotten them expertise for free anyway, which is why it is a worse investment in my mind than something like my Sargon, for example, because at least for Sargon, he's not over maxed. Okay. This was just a bad choice, but this was a bad choice that I made that I would have gotten regardless. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for my eight massive mistakes here in rise of kingdoms. Let me know what you think about these mistakes in the comment section below. Have you made any of these mistakes as well? Were you surprised by any of these mistakes that I have made over the years? I also want to just point out that you shouldn't feel bad about making these mistakes. Okay. If you've made any of them, this is literally a video game so like don't get too hung up over it it's not a big deal i promise you will live you'll survive it's just a game you can move on it's okay but let me know what you think in the comment section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing while you're down there and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and i just want to remind you guys of my second channel and also my twitch and discord links will be in the description below please consider following me on all those platforms as well and with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace